Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be playing a few Nintendo Game Boy Advance games on my Steam Deck. So uh, these are being played through RetroArch, which uses the MGBA emulator. And uh, we're looking at the uh, emulation station front end here, which procures and curates your games in this lovely style. And I thought we'd start off with a, a bona fide Game Boy Advance classic. This is certainly the the game I bought when the Game Boy Advance came out. I bought my Game Boy Advance had the uh, like the purple one, and also uh, Mario Kart Super Circuit. Fantastic little game. Now, one thing I found with the Steam Deck playing these GBA games is that, in a way, the screen is almost too big. It's literally too big. So certain games are just not looking that good anymore when they've even blown up at this resolution. Um, you know, Mario Kart here doesn't look too bad, of course. It's, it's a great fun game and it's nice and quick. Um, none of these had any sort of issues running properly. This is only a Game Boy Advance after all. Um, and, you know, you could run this on even the cheapest of smartphones these days. But um, it's all about the, the experience. So some stuff played better than others really or or basically some stuff is a more enjoyable experience on the steam deck than it was uh, than you might think so this one here's the atari anniversary advance collection so they've got all manner of a uh, classic um, atari arcade games and um, one that's never really um, been superseded was the original Tempest, which was a great, great game, and I enjoyed playing this one back in the day on the arcade. It's very, very black screen, so uh, apologies for the little bit of reflection there. Um, but I wanted to try with these videos um, to sort of try lots of different genres. So we've got you know classic racing games, we've got arcade games, we've got beat 'em ups, we've got shooters, uh, we've got a bit of RPG going on. So quite a variety. This one, I have to say, looked pretty darn good. It's Baldur's Gate. Dark Alliance. Now I was not expecting this to look quite as good and it looks lovely as you can see. Now it's a little bit wordy and obviously I want this video to flow you know without boring you to death but just look at this I mean it's like the 3D isometric viewpoint and it really really easy to control but as I said it's, it's a proper full-on RPG. It's quite linear so it's not like you've got loads of places to go it's not completely open world or anything but just look at that that is beautiful and uh, on an original GBA that would look literally stunning so uh, yeah good stuff that one really really good quite a revelation was Baldur's Gate this is Banjo Pilot this is uh, made by Rare. Makes some of the very best games for the uh, Nintendo systems. The most famous one was uh, GoldenEye for the 64, which I'm sure you will remember. But this is pretty cool. Enjoyed this one. You can go up or down, and obviously you know you've got your accelerate to get around the track. You can rise or fall in the air. Once you got the hang of it. There's just so many good games for the uh, the GBA. It's a case of just digging through some of the dross to find the good stuff. So in actual fact, um, although we've got 20 games, and in fact 21 because the last ones thought were a bit of a bonus, um, I actually went through about 30, 35 games. And these are like the best sort of 20 that I sort of played in my first run through and even then I'm only about halfway through the alphabet <laughs> so I could easily do a follow-up to this one if you want. Uh, this was fantastic really really enjoyable this is Batman Rise of Sinzu. Now looking at the Batman he does appear and the graphics style does appear to be like the um, the 1994 Batman the Animated Series cartoon so I think that's possibly what this is designed on or designed around um, and it was really it wasn't difficult this is obviously just the first level but it was really really easy to navigate batman right from the off and um, yeah i had a lot of fun with this one this was brilliant i should be going back to this one
<laughs> this is Big Mother Truckers. Now, I've never played a trucking game before, at least not that I can remember. Um, and this one took a little bit of getting used to, I have to say. I couldn't figure out how to change the gear, um, so I just sort of bundled along on the main road. I do get a fair bit of speed up. Um, but this is quite deep, there's actually like an RPG element to it, um, and you've got to uh, sort of help out Big Mother, as in the title, and uh, help out the business, the family haulage business. It's pretty cool, actually. When you think some of these games are just running on a on Game Boy Advance hardware, it's amazing what they managed to squeeze on them back then. But this sort of game would have looked amazing in the early 2000s, wouldn't it? Whereas uh, today, well, you know, on this big screen, it doesn't exactly look the greatest, but it is what it is. This is another one, and I do sort of vaguely remember playing this one before, but I don't think it was on the Game Boy Advance system. It's called uh, Blades of Thunder, and uh, basically, I think you pretty much just have to hit anything that's on screen. So initially, it's it's boats, and they're firing missiles at you, you and your chopper there, and then um, you've got static and moving boats coming up, and uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good actually. You can see using the little radar in the bottom right where the enemies are. I almost wish, in a funny sort of way, that um, this emulator had the mock um, bezels like the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance that we've already seen um, so that the screen's a little bit smaller and you could have it with or without because some games like this one here, Boulder Dash, which is more a puzzle game uh, a real classic one at that this one looks absolutely fine, full screen, you know um, but it's when they try and do something a little bit more advanced like you know, 3D graphics for example that obviously the Game Boy is going to struggle a little bit because of the system that it is, it's, it's as simple as that. But something like this is fine, and this is great in full screen. And uh, I've, I've always loved uh, Boulder Dash, great, great game. This is Boulder Dash EX, EX. And uh, yeah, it's good stuff. A little bit of Mr. Do going on there with the, uh, the falling rocks onto the uh, the creatures. I was trying to get that last uh, last crystal, but I couldn't quite get it. Now this is Cars, based on the Pixar game, it's a racing game, and um, this is actually good on pretty much all systems, but it's particularly good on the original Xbox, as I recall, now the racing game on that one's really good, but it's not bad on this one, the tracks are great, um, but they don't have a lot of variety in regards to what's going on either side of the tracks, so as long as you stick on the road. Um, your car moves absolutely fine, but it's um, you know it's not exactly the most visually appealing. But the actual gameplay is good, and I think that's possibly what's most important with these GBA games. But the cars, as a franchise, they're pretty good across the board on on pretty much all systems. So uh, worth giving a go if you've never tried them. This was fantastic, as are all the Castlevania games on the GBA. I believe there's four of them. This one's Castlevania Circle of the Moon. And it's a bit Metroid style initially, where you're sort of going down into the catacombs, you've been given a mission. And uh, once again, it takes a little bit of time just to get the, the feel for the controls, but that's normal with these sorts of games. But very, very easy to lose hours playing these, it really is great and they are a lot of fun. So these sort of style 2D platformers I think are where the uh, the Game Boy Advance really excels with a few exceptions these are these are just the bread and butter and uh, when it's done right like these are with a great soundtrack you know your gar it's like almost like a guarantee of quality
Good stuff. Now this is another example where I can't believe, to be honest, that they actually went ahead and did it. And they brought Crazy Taxi to the GBA. This is Crazy Taxi Catch a Ride. And it works the same as normal Crazy Taxi, if you can believe it. I mean, it is just astounding, really, that they've managed to get the basic premise of Crazy Taxi, picking up and dropping off passengers squeezed onto a GBA car in a, you know, in a 3D world where you can go off in any direction you like. Um, really quite quite something. Um, obviously the object collision is not quite what you would expect on something like the Dreamcast or something like that, but even so they've done a pretty good job here considering this was a little GBA cartridge. And when you get going you do experience quite, you know, the experience of simulated speed. You are zooming through the roads just like in the uh, the bigger console versions. Now this was sadly a bit of a disappointment. I can only think, based on the time it came out, that this tied into the very first Marvel movie of Daredevil. Um, and it was a bit of a shame because he's so massively underpowered, um, the Daredevil character, that you know, even on these early screens here, he's, he's a bit of a wimp, to be honest, you know? So not the greatest of uh, fighters I'm afraid to say but it's obviously just a street fighter clone with uh, with Daredevil as the main guy um, yeah it was a bit of a disappointment this one which is a shame because I do like superhero games on the whole there are some very good Spider-Man ones which I had back in the day for the GBA and maybe um, this particular system does warrant a follow-up video because I've not had a chance to cover any of the Zelda games either yet so there's loads there's loads still untouched um, because there's just so many great games for it so we'll have another look now this was great this is Donkey Kong Country 2 this is another one from Rare and this is classic platform in this particular level set on a boat and uh, really really great fun And that, to me, is what I'm looking for when I play GBA games on my Steam Deck. I just want quick pick-up and play of my favourites, you know. I don't want... I couldn't spend the time investing in, in a massive RPG. I don't think, although there's some really good ones on here. But because it's a Steam Deck, I'd be tempted to play one of the more modern systems RPGs um, rather than a GBA one, I think. But, you know, that's just me. This is pretty cool. I mean, this is sort of Doom, the original Doom, and uh, you recognize the levels here. I mean, it's almost like a classic, but if you had, I don't know, this is sort of the Doom that I would give a 12 year old and say, look, this is what the original Doom was like. You're not gonna really, it's basically shoot everything, you know, <laughs> and see how you get on, see if you like it or not, to just sort of introduce them to the genre. I mean, youngsters today, they're all playing Call of Duty and things like that. They'll laugh at this. But if it was maybe the first time they'd ever played a first-person shooter, this would be sort of the thing you could give them for a bit of fun. This or Duke Nukem. Um, this is a GBA game, so it's not going to be massively violent. There's no bad language or anything like that. It's just, you know, shoot everything and uh, work your way through the levels. And, you know, although it doesn't look great on the Steam Deck, on the GBA itself, it looked amazing. There was a few like this. There was X versus Sever, and also um, Duke Nukem, which I am going to show it a little bit uh, in a little bit of time. But I did want to show Double Dragons. This is the classic arcade game. It's, it's pixel perfect, and um, this is what the Daredevil game should have should have been. But sadly, was uh, was a bit of a disappointment. Look at that guy's mullet. You can tell this is from the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> but these games were great they were particularly great fun when you had a mate playing by the side of you so the two of you could take on the bad guys and you could get a bit further and you'd end up feeding so much money to into the machine it's just incredible
Now this one I've seen recommended in the past and this is the first time I think I remembered to give it a try. Um, so it's a, and it's really, really great, very, very polished. It's called Drill Dozer. And once again, this has got sort of an RPG element to it, but you've got this massive drill that you can pull out and then drill through to different parts of the, of the levels. As you can see, really nice graphics, even when it's been upscaled like this on the bigger screen. So uh, it's worth a little look, this one. Uh, you might want to give this one a try. This is a drill dozer. So now we've got a little bit of Duke Nukem. Duke Nukem Advance, they call it. And um, I think it's equally as polished as Doom, but it depends on your preference, really. They're so, so similar. Um, but once again, when you think this is running on GBA f uh, hardware, it's just incredible, really, isn't it, you know? Obviously, you've got limited uh, controls with the GBA. There's only so much you can actually do. I think for me, it probably would be Doom would get the edge because that was the one I, I sort of played the most with various mods back in the day. This is another verified bonafide classic, F-Zero GP Legend. So I don't do too bad on this one because I had a couple of warmers before I uh, started filming. Um, there's two sort of modes on this one. You can just do a chase mode where you're chasing after um, an opponent and you have to catch them up. Or this one which is the GP mode which is basically there's 30 other cars on the track but um, you've got to try and catch them up and uh, basically it's just a normal race. But nice to see... Uh, this one zipping along at super fast speeds. This is one of my uh, favourite shooters. It's called Gradius. And this is Gradius Advance. Just show you a little bit of the gameplay on this one. I do like a good sideways schmuck. Uh, this one's great. You just need to play it a bit so you know where all the power-ups and things like that are. Um, certainly an enjoyable, an enjoyable one. And I played uh, the original sort of a version of this back in the arcade all those years ago. And uh, it gets progressively harder, but you know, that such is the nature of the beast. This one I played on a couple of different systems. I think the last one I played it on was the original PlayStation, and it's good. It's uh, Ms. Pac-Man: Maze Madness, and uh, it certainly takes the the Pac-Man idea to a new level um, you know you've got like teleports and you have to move bricks around and things like that it's quite quite good and each level is like themed as well this is like the uh, Egyptian style sort of level it's good it's all right this this is like a little teleporter thing there gets you through the wall So that was your 20 games, but I've put this one in as 21, as a bit of a, a bonus extra. Um, so this is the first time ever in the history of this channel, which is three and a half years old, I'm showing a Pokemon game. And this is Pokemon Emerald version. And uh, this is like the little opening sequence. And uh, then there's a lot of setting it up, putting your name in. I've cut all of that out. And then you get straight into the gameplay. So I thought I'd uh, um, play a bit of this one just until we uh, end this video now so thank you very much for watching today i hope you've enjoyed this little glimpse at gba games running on the steam deck if you would like another one because there's easily enough to do another one or two videos on the gba uh, leave a comment below and i shall uh, come up with another list and we'll cover some of the zelda games and things like that at that time um, next week we're going to be looking at n64 game performance on the steam deck so uh, 
I'm very much looking forward to sharing some of my better uh, or my favorite N64 games and they do play really really well. So there you go, hope you have enjoyed this video today. If you've not already, do please hit that subscribe button for regular Steam Deck content. And I shall look forward to seeing you again in a week's time with another video. Bye.